Last thing I'm gonna be adding to this is something that's going to make its calories just skyrocket. All natural peanut butter. I also did add a Oiko's yogurt with 15 grams. And this peanut butter is not thick. It is, it is significantly liquidy because it's literally only peanuts and it has like no added sugar. So there is, it's pretty non-sweet. It just tastes like peanuts as it should. So if you're looking for a sweet peanut butter, would not recommend getting this one, but this one is literally oil free, no extra palm oil or any of that. Yeah, chicken bacon and fruit would really make this a complete breakfast, but I don't have either of those things ready, so we're just gonna stick with this. Yay! First thing you wanna do is get some rice as the base. Okay. You're going to need ground turkey, lettuce, and pico de gallo or a salsa. We're gonna just weigh another bowl and try to figure it out because I need to track that. Okay, so that's 78, 79, okay. So 290 minus 79. Okay, so that's 211 grams of cooked rice. And we're gonna get, Try to go for a hundred always with any protein, just a hundred grams because that's about a cup. And obviously more is better right now. 105. We have a lot left over, so I'm gonna save that for later. This is ground, not beef, this is ground turkey. Microwave that. Now while that is being microwaved, I'm going to take some lettuce. Get two leaves, dirty of course, so wash them off. <laughs> Just a general good rule of thumb to like wash your things because you literally don't really know where they came from. You don't know what they went through to get here. And I just feel better knowing that I washed my stuff. You're gonna tear up the lettuce. Okay, put it to the side. I personally actually hate measuring my food and tracking, but I actually really need to right now because it is a matter of, not life or death, but a matter of being able to see straight, if you will. 77 grams, yeah, that's good. Just like a dash, you know, not, not too much. Enough for another one if I want. Get good at remembering how much it is like visually because then you can literally eye your stuff and then you won't have to pull out the scale keep track of how much you did and all that jazz because no one no one likes to pull out the scale every single time it's like such a ugh, i hate it i just don't i just like i want to eat i don't want to be doing math you know it's not it's not even like a big deal but i just don't like doing it to be honest most important step to making this tasty, of course, is adding lime, okay? People underestimate the power of a little lime or lemon juice, and voila, it's very healthy, so it's not gonna cost you anything. Also, lime and lemons are pretty inexpensive right now, so if you're looking for some extra flavor in your food, I really highly, highly, highly recommend doing this. Just take that piece off that you just sliced. It looks like kind of a wedge. And I just squeeze it all out onto pretty much everything. Chipotle rice is not Chipotle rice without their literal main ingredient, salt, okay? Um, obviously, I kind of forgot to do that at the beginning, but you can literally just kind of pour it on and then just 
mix it in and you'll literally be fine. It's all going to the same place, so it doesn't really matter. In an ideal world, I would add cheese or like a really low fat cheese, which I actually might do eventually, but it's honestly just good like this. So obviously you can also add like avocado for extra calories and like I would, but again, these are not ready. But yeah, that, this is probably my favorite meal right now. It's really good. It's really, really freaking easy and it's cheap. So, yay. What's up team? Today we are about to make my lunch before we go to the gym and hit chest and shoulders. This is one of the easiest meals that you will ever make in your life. And that is a chicken salad with a thing of rice, which is cooking. We are bulking now. We are in our bulk phase. And if you had the chicken salad alone, it would be super low calorie. So it's a good cutting meal, but we are trying to eat as healthy as possible while in the first trimester of a bulk period. So okay. you need a bowl. What you do is you take a bunch of romaine lettuce out like this, take off like two to three leaves, like so. Wash these off because you can't really see, but they are um, dirty with literal dirt. Break it, break it, and if you can, kind of just, mm, look at that water, that yellow freaking water, ew, that's so gross. And then you have a little bit of a lettuce base. So obviously you can do more, more lettuce if you want, but I really like for me lettuce, so. Then you're gonna take some spinach. This is baby spinach. Tear it up a little bit like this. Okay, I'm gonna get some more. Okay. Some more, some more spinach. Spinach, I believe, has a little bit more, more calories than lettuce. So that's why we're kind of just doing like a spinachy salad. And we're just gonna go, I do not microwave my chicken for a salad because I just don't see any purpose in doing that. But if you want warm microwaved chicken on your salad, I say go ahead, you know. Just tearing pieces, that's fine. It doesn't have to be a, a perfect slice. Okay. So the chicken, usually I have a lot more, but we do not have uh, any more cooked chicken on us today. But of course, we're gonna be adding some dressing. This one has 80 calories in it. I used to eat my salad with no dressing at all, even when I wasn't even into lifting. I don't know why I did that, but <laughs> I'm glad I grew out of that phase. You should never eat moldy food, but if you can save a couple that don't look like they're moldy, I would say rinse them off with warm water and pray. <laughs> Little chicken fruit, fruity chicken salad. One glass of milk. I'm not gonna measure this because a cup is pretty you can just eye a cup since we're on a bulk we're gonna add two cups and that is about 260 calories in one drink but this is one of my go-to meals and i guess minus the milk this is kind of gross but some things you just gotta do you know i would like to put a disclaimer that if eating or dieting is a sensitive subject for you or you feel uncomfortable hearing about it, please do not watch the following segment of this video because I will be talking about it, my experience, and I do not want to cause anything to people watching. Welcome back to another chat session. This one is going to be about cutting. Two-ish months, I have lost 10 pounds, so the cut is officially over. And it's also over because it had to end immediately, and I will explain why. Somewhere 
in between April and June, I started to walk home from things and would get dizzy when I would come home. And that was on and off for like a week. And then it started to get worse and worse. And eventually got to the point where mid-June, I was dizzy every single day. I couldn't work out proficiently. I was tired. I was depressed. I had anxiety. Like, I couldn't go anywhere. I didn't want to work out. So, the dizziness accumulated to the point where I literally just didn't want to leave uh, my room. And so, I stopped cutting because... I had a very strong feeling is because I wasn't eating enough. Spoiler alert, I wasn't. I went to the doctor several times because I was like, why am I dizzy? And um, she had me get my blood tested. She wanted to look at my brain and have all these other tests done. It was a horrible, stressful week where I couldn't function and had no idea what was wrong with me. So I stopped and started to try to eat more. And guess what? It all went away. No surprise. But I did successfully lose 10 pounds, which was the goal. I just wanted to get lean. Okay, that's all I wanted. Successfully, I have gotten leaner. And lost muscle, of course. That's really inevitable. I lost 10 pounds by using two words. Ready? Calorie deficit. That is the only way to do it. I put my maintenance in for what I currently was weighing at the beginning of April. Did a little calculation. Went down significantly. Stayed down for way too long. Okay, I was eating like twice a day. Okay, let's just put that in perspective. I was eating twice a day and still training. Protein? None. (laughs) I'm kidding. There was protein, but it was very minimal. I did not care as much as I should have for keeping protein up because I was more worried about getting lean as quickly as possible. Should you ever do that? No. No, you should not. So, all in all, calorie deficit. Okay. Um, Cardio, that was good. The cardio was good. I still do cardio to this day. Um, That's probably never going to leave my routine anymore. Um, Cardio was good. Water intake, also decent. Could have been better. Definitely could have been better, but it was better than my bulking water intake, period. That was not good. So was the cut successful? Yes. Was it worth it? No. Because now I have the joy and pleasure of recovering from that entire mess of having my health significantly decline and having to rework with my organs and regain appetite and I'm still struggling to eat enough as much as I used to when I was maintaining because my stomach has shrank. Do I recommend cutting? Short answer, no. Do I think it's beneficial? Yes. However, if you are at a healthy weight, talking to myself here, If you are at a healthy weight, reconsider your ways of cutting, okay? Okay, if I was already at a very healthy, very healthy weight for my height and age, okay? Very healthy. Did I need to cut now? Why did I, though? To be lean, of course. Why else would you cut? You cut to be lean. Or unless you're overweight and you actually need to lose weight. That is the only reason. Okay? Yeah, so I do not recommend it. Especially if you are a woman, do not cut 
without really considering the risk versus reward. If you are cutting for just to look lean for about three months, don't do it. Unless you're a bodybuilder. Unless you're a bodybuilder. Don't do it. Am I a bodybuilder? No! Do I plan on competing? No. Because this is what I would have to do, and I literally cannot handle it. And it's not very healthy, so... If you are just a person who is training to feel good, and you're at a healthy weight, you do not need to cut. You can just healthily do a body recomposition. You do not have to cut. You do not have to. If you want to, sure. Go ahead. Have fun. Some things I learned. Cutting is not for me. Second of all, to care about my protein and track my food. I probably tracked once every two two weeks while cutting. When I stopped tracking, that is when it really went downhill because I had no idea that I was eating significantly less than I should have. Some could say I was eating enough for a nine-year-old boy. Let me put that in perspective to you. I was eating enough food that a nine-year-old, maybe even seven-year-old, needs to maintain. Okay, if it ever comes to that point for you, please reconsider who am I to give advice, you know? I'm just telling my experience, but it is not healthy to get to a point where you are dizzy and your body is telling you to stop. If your body ever gives you warning signs that you need to eat more, stop cutting. Also, don't take supplements that you don't need, okay? I thought because I was dizzy, I needed iron. So guess what I started taking without actually needing it? Iron. And guess what that gave me? Iron overdose and stomach issues. Don't do that. Don't overdose on supplements because that is a very real thing. Don't do that. Please make sure you're eating enough. And I'm really also saying this to all the women who are subscribed to me, which is very few, please make sure you're eating enough food because this will happen to you. You will end up with organ issues and long-term problems if you continue a very poor, underfed lifestyle so you can have some temporary looks, okay? It's not worth it. Coming from me who has tried it, done it successfully, and I'm now recovering from several health issues, from cutting. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. You don't have to. If you're already at a healthy weight, you don't have to cut. Just do a recomp. Do not be influenced to eat less than what you need, okay? It is so frustrating, and very recently has it come to my attention that more than ever, are female influencers pushing that you need to be on a deficit, that you need to be lean, that you need to be underfed, okay? Hey, do you want to end up with long-term health issues? If you are not planning to compete and you are not at an unhealthy weight, do not cut. Don't do it. There's other ways you can successfully lose body fat. Here's one. Start doing cardio. Or... Why don't you do, like, a really mild deficit? You do not need to go from, like, two, f 2,500 calories to a 1,700 deficit. Don't do that. Don't do that. Why would you do that? Uh, dizziness, tiredness, depression, anxiety, weakness, no appetite. I will not be cutting again. This is just a very tough subject because not everyone agrees that cutting is terrible. I don't think it's terrible. I don't think it's necessary. Okay, there's a difference. I never said cutting is terrible for you. I just think it's unnecessary, especially if you're already... There are so many fruit flies. I apologize if you see any of them. If you're already at a, health, at a healthy body weight, 
You don't need to go on a crazy deficit. You don't need to. You are literally just going to give yourself so many more problems. You're going to feel like poop all the time. Okay. I probably was the least confident when I was at my leanest. I didn't want to work out. I didn't want to look at myself. I didn't want to weigh myself. I didn't want to track. I didn't even want to just be happy I made it. Because I felt so terrible that I was like, why did I do this? Why was I looking forward to being lean? This is the worst thing ever. It's ruined my passion for lifting. I don't want to eat. I have no appetite. I don't want to look at food. I can't see straight. Maybe I did take it too harshly and probably did it wrong, which is very valid. But I'm not the first person to experience the consequences of being in a deficit when you don't need to be in one. Did I need to cut? No. Could I have lost body fat in a healthier, better, not restrictive way? Yes, it's possible. Yeah, so I ignored a couple warning signs. Um, dizziness, anxiety, like, skyrocketed for no reason. I cannot wait for more people to realize, especially women, hi, that you need to eat more in your life. A lot of you need to wake up and realize that you're not eating enough food for your body. You're not, probably. Hello. If you're not a bodybuilder, if you're not, like, looking to be in a weight class, save yourself the misery and eat enough, okay? It's going to benefit you in the long run. <sighs> this is just something that's been on my mind for a while. I was going to talk about, you know, reflecting on it. This is really my reflection is that it was not worth it and I will not be doing it again <sighs> because it has literally ruined a lot of things I currently have to recover from and retrain. Yeah, I am not a professional, of course, and this is just my experience. So I just want to be honest and say that I do not recommend cutting if you were at a healthy weight. <sighs> if you want to look lean, there are other healthier ways to do that. Starting with cardio. Try doing cardio more often. See what happens. Maybe switch up your training style. Maybe get your steps in. How about we start there? Okay? Because if you start there, maybe you'll actually see some improvement before you go, Let me eat 1,500 calories, and then I'll look like the girls on Instagram. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> Oh, it's so frustrating. Let me go on the carnivore diet. Let me go on the keto diet. Then I'll look like the girls on Instagram. Half of the girls on Instagram that I see or are recommended to me because I do not follow them um, are in a very low calorie deficit and it is the most unhealthy and unsustainable diet you will ever experience and will most likely give you long-term issues. Don't do it. Your body is not meant for that. There are other ways to get lean. I'm not kidding. Healthier ways, like going in a mild deficit, okay? I'm not saying don't. If you want to get lean, you're probably going to need to go in a deficit, but it does not need to be 500,000 billion calories less than maintenance, okay? You do not have to be between 10 and 15% body fat. Is that sustainable? No. No, it's not. I'm just being honest, okay? I'm really just saving some people who have come to me asking for cutting advice. And my advice? Go in a very small deficit and do cardio, okay? Just start there. You'll be fine. How about eat more protein? I'm sorry for rambling. I just needed to get that out there. You do not need to look like the girls on Instagram, the boys on Instagram, 
okay? If it does not make you happy, don't do it. That is something I learned through this, is that... Um... Being leaner did not make me happy. If it makes you happy, good for you. I'm glad. Again, if you want to cut, go ahead and cut. This is not me trying to force you not to. I'm just telling my experience and my recommendation. Cut responsibly. That is what I'm going to say. Just cut responsibly. And really consider the consequences and the risk to reward. Peace out, team. Thank you for listening.